Allie Pierce at the ranch. I'm a big fan of Polaris. I think you guys who follow me regularly know that. A Polaris snowmobile, Polaris ATVs. I like Polaris, but they're not perfect. You know, if you're mechanically inclined at all, certainly if you're a mechanic, an internal combustion engine type mechanic, you know that you only need two things to make an engine run. You need fuel and spark. So I'm assuming if the machine won't run, won't start and won't run, you've checked the spark, yep, and you've checked it as fuel, yep. If not, throw a bit of gasoline in the carburetor, try If it kicks, you got spark, and there's something wrong with the carburetor. However, sometimes there's other problems. You press the starter button, nothing happens. You get a click, nothing else happens. What the heck is that? Well, that's got nothing to do with the fuel and the spark, because the engine hasn't turned over yet. You're back, you're back to more basic things. The engine has to turn over before it'll start. And you get the spark and the fuel and it spins and then boom, away you go. If it doesn't turn over, that's not a spark fuel problem. That's another problem. And it's probably more likely related to the mechanical uh, uh, process by which the engine is spun over. And that's the starter. But we don't know what it is because there's several things in the starter. There's the battery, there's the key, there's the solenoid, there's the starter itself, there's the Bendix, there's the flywheel. All, all those things are part of the starter mechanism. So how do you figure it out? So you turn the key, click, 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 click. What is that? Yeah, could be one of those, several of those things. Number one, check the battery. If the battery is weak, car, truck, diesel, ATV, doesn't matter what it is. If the battery is weak, the solenoid may click, but there may not be enough power to spin the starter. The starter takes a lot of power. That's why the solenoid is in there. You may not know this, but the solenoid, this little silly little thing right here, is really it's kind of a relay, if you like. And all this does is connect from the battery positive to the battery positive, which, which runs to the starter. And all that does is there's too much current flowing to have a little toggle switch for the starter. You can't just flick a little switch and the starter spins. Now you burn that switch out in two tries. So it has this heavy duty switch called a solenoid. And this wire runs up to the ignition, uh, up to the key. And when you turn the key, this wire gets power, runs down, it will click, makes the solenoid in this, in, in this solenoid, it makes the electromagnet go up and it joins these two really heavy bolts. And there's a heavy cable from the battery to this one, and a heavy cable from here to the starter. So now it gets the heavy current going through there. So it's a heavy duty switch is all it is. Heavy duty switch, with a, activated by the key. Power to the key, click, click. The switch, is, the switch is working, but the starter's not spinning. Understand a little bit there? So I'm gonna quickly just show you how you, how you use a circuit tester to check that process and find out what the problem is. And then I'll show you how to fix that problem. So we're gonna go over to the machine right now. I'm gonna show you the quick, very quickly, the process of checking that, uh, that to make sure that in fact it is the starter is the problem. Uh, then I'm gonna show you how to take that starter up. The Polaris Sportsman series from about 97 to maybe 2005, all exactly the same, the same crankcase, the same starter, all exactly the same parts. So what I'm about to show you applies to all those machines. Okay, let's call it 97 to 2005 Sportsman. Same, it's exactly the same. And there's one little problem with getting that darn starter out to fix it. One little problem. Nobody tells you about it. In the service manual it says, take out the two screws that hold the starter. <laughs> I got news for you. It doesn't work that way. Take out the two screws that hold the starter and the starter will come out. Nope. I'll show you the problem in just a second. I'll be right back. Okay, let's see if we can figure out why this starter is not spinning. First of all, you need to take this off. This is the air intake for the uh, for the belt drive and clutches. And and fortunately, that's very easy to get out. It's a single bolt. Guess what size it is? I'll get, you guys go ahead and think about it for a minute. 10 mil. So there's one bolt right there. Take that bolt out, and this, this lifts out like that. Not terribly important. Now you can see the starter. There's the starter way down there. Is it? That's it right there. It's not that bad, actually. It's not too bad. And you can see that this wire here with the red cap is the power wire that runs to that single bolt on the side of the starter. Simple enough. The starter is bolted to the frame, and the frame is grounded with a heavy black cable running from the battery. So all we have to do is get power to the starter. And we do that by turning the key. Listen. Every time you turn the key to start, it clicks. 
but nothing's happening down there. So what's the problem? Well, first thing you need to do, as I mentioned out there, is to check the battery, make sure it's working. So if you've got your test light, check your test light, hook it onto something that's grounded, and put the test light onto the positive terminal of the battery. And I'll touch the, there we go. Wow, that's good. So the battery's in good shape. That's not a problem. Now, next is, there's a cable that runs from the battery to the solenoid. And so I can find, it's only a short cable. You can see a little red cable it runs, it's only about a six inches. It runs to the solenoid. Let's make sure that cable is working. Oh, yeah, okay. Touch the bolt that it's a fastened to. Okay, so we're getting power to the one side of the solenoid. That's perfect. Okay. And now I need to check if the solenoid is working. Solenoid is working. You see, the solenoid is clicking. No problem, but is it working properly? Maybe the contacts in there are really bad. So to check that, go to the other bolt. There's two bolts on the top of the solenoid. Kevin's got a picture of the solenoid there. There's two bolts. Power comes into one side, and when the solenoid is activated, it goes out the other side. So you can check one side, yes, power. And when you activate the solenoid, the power should go to the other side. Let's check the other side now, okay? And to do that, just reach in, touch that other bolt, there's a bolt on each side, you watch the light, let's see, I'll click the solenoid, let's see what's happening here. Oh, okay, so the solenoid's working. So the power is now getting to the other wire. Here is that other wire, right here. Here it is right here. I could have gone here. So we click the solenoid now. This is the wire that runs to the starter. Just that simple. So what do we know so far? Battery's okay, solenoid is working, and there's power going to the starter. But the starter's not spinning. Starter's no good. Just that simple. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to pull this starter out, and then I'm going to um, uh, uh, check it, take it apart, see if I can repair it. The service manual for this machine actually shows you about six pages how to repair the starter. Eh, you know, they're not terribly expensive. I'll see if I want to repair it or not. And uh, then we are going to uh, replace some parts. Fix, replace the starter. And I think, well, I've got those all apart. I'll replace that solenoid too. Yeah, it's, uh, they're cheap, 10 bucks. I'm going to replace that too. Because every time you press the key, it clicks and works and it carries a lot of current. Let's replace that too. Then the problem is solved. So we need to get the starter out. Now, Kevin's got a picture here that shows the two bolt holes down in there. <clears throat> They are 10 millimeter, surprise, 10 millimeter. Now you can't really get in there with a socket wrench, not easily. Can you see in there, Kevin? Can you see that one bolt right there? But I've loosened it up using a flat wrench like so. I've loosened it up, okay? So now all I need to do is reach in like so, and I pull out that bolt. No problem, right? The problem is that one down there. That one down in there, I can actually reach down with a wrench and I can put the wrench on it and I can, oh, I have to use the open end actually, I can't get this closing. I can turn it a little wee bit, just a little fraction each time. Out we go. Well, looks, hey, we're winning here. All you have to do is get that other bolt out and the whole starter pops out, right? Here's the problem. <laughs> the bolt is an inch and a half long. There isn't an inch and a half of space in there. As you start to back the bolt out, you'll realize that all of a sudden, eventually, the bolt hits the back of the clutch housing, the transmission housing, right inside there. Can't see very well right now, but the bolt comes out and comes out. Hey, this is great. This is easy. And it stops. It won't come out any farther. You can't pull the starter out. You can't pull the bolt out. It's not in the service manual. They say, take the two bolts out, take the starter out. That don't work that way. I do not want to take this all apart. This is a nuisance. You see, it goes all the way back there. You got to take it all apart. There's about 10 bolts, 10 mil. <laughs> and this cover comes off, which is a big help. But then you got to get it back off. To get the back off, really, you almost have to take the clutch out. I do not want to do all of that. So I worked and I worked. It must have taken me an hour to get that one single bolt out. Finally, I figured out how to do it. It's really quite simple, you know, in retrospect. I feel like a dummy now. What you have to do, undo the bolt. The bolt comes out until the head hits the back of this. And then what you have to do is pull the starter motor towards you like that until the starter motor also hits the head of that bolt and the two of them resting on the back of this. And then if you very carefully, you can twist the starter motor 
and the bolt up like so there it is there's the bolt that was so much trouble and there's the starter motor and the whole thing comes out like so I make I see it just comes out like so you see how easy this I'm going for a drink anyway that was the issue and that was the problem I faced and maybe you guys as well if you have to replace the starter motor in your early sportsman's that's what you're going to be faced with easy enough but now there's a little tip for you and plus how to check the circuitry in there okay let's go back to the bench take a look at a few parts and I'll wrap this up so we got the starter out here's the starter now as I showed you over there on the machine there are two bolts there they are those two bolts you saw me take them out two bolts that hold it in like that all right and then there's a cable that's just all that holds this in there's the two bolts that actually bolt it to the crankcase and then there's this bolt up here this nut up here which it goes on to the battery terminal and that holds the 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 positive cable coming from the solenoid to the starter turn the key solenoid clicks click power comes in the battery through the solenoid to the starter starter is grounded of course through these bolts and, and spins the starter and the engine starts just that simple look at it sitting on the bench now what do you do well you take it apart is what you do because it is possible if you read the um, uh, service manual it is possible to fix these things yeah so what you do is you take it there's two two long bolts see them here uh, that hold those starter together there's three sections to the starter if you like and it holds the starter together there they are and if you look carefully be careful on the end of the bolt there's a funny little washer it's flat on one side there's also a little rubber washer I guess that's designed to keep water out because this will get splashed and so on there's also a rubber o-ring right around here to keep water from getting into there and this is the actual pinion spline pinion that uh, that drives the bendix another word you haven't heard right bendix drives the bendix there's the bendix there i'll tell you about that in a second and uh, that spins the flywheel and spins the engine and then the spark and the fuel boom way we go riding okay so you take those two bolts out then you pull it apart that sometimes is easier said than done whatever it doesn't matter which end comes off that end comes off we'll take that off and then oh and then we'll do it this way can't get that apart so we'll do it this way so there's the, the middle section one end cap one middle section so you get this whole thing apart and you're thinking you're going to save it put it take a picture take a picture okay that goes there that goes there okay two bolts just that simple and what do we got we got the casing right here this casing has a great big strong magnet in there oh very strong magnet solid magnet in there that's cool this end cap doesn't do it a darn thing it's got that washer on there and it's got this funny little thing on the inside snaps over the end this is the armature this is the critical part it has a solid shaft through spline on this end and on this end it has what's called a commutator there it is right there now the commutator you can see is all black and greasy and grimy there so then i took a look in here and you can replace these brushes apparently according to the service man although it looks like a nasty job one of the brushes is pretty good the other brush is toasty you know it's worn right down. ah the hell yeah a lot of work so i go to my favorite retailer amazon now don't get me wrong okay i patronize our local polaris dealer all the time buyers equipment right on astley road which is outside of aurelia get a little plug for you guys great guys and they charge going rates for OEM parts. Okay? Original equipment manufacturer's parts, Polaris parts. It's a lot of money. These are 25-year-old machines. I keep them running, I do a pretty good job. But I'm really reluctant to pay a whole bunch of money for a new starter when I can get one off of Amazon for 30 bucks. I know it's not as good. Don't give me a hard time. I know it's not as good. The wires aren't probably as heavy copper, and the casting maybe isn't as good. And uh, it's not as good. It's, you know, I'm 75. I don't need it to last for another 40 years. Okay, I want to run for a few more years, do a good job. And I know it. I'm not going to tell anybody this is as good as that one from. No, I don't think it is. But that's what I did. And while I was doing that, I picked up a Bendix. And what the heck, I picked up an, uh, a, a solenoid too. This was $9 and this was $20 or something like that. So all together, I got less than $50. I got a new starter, a new Bendix, a new solenoid. Bolt them in, hook up the wires, and we go riding. I'm sorry. 
if you're a Polaris dealer, but that's the way it is, and you know that. And I was in retail for 50 years, I know what it's all about. So there's my new starter. I just have to put it back in using, remembering that little thing I told you, that trick about putting the bolt and turning it in place and then screwing it in. And I got to put the wire from the solenoid on there and, and so on. Now I want to take a minute and tell you about the Bendix. What the heck is a Bendix? Well, the Bendix is a pretty neat device. I'll tell you that right now. It's a pretty neat device. The Bendix <clears throat> sits the side of the crankcase right by the flywheel. In fact, it sits right at the end where the starter sits. You see that? And the starter actually engages on that gear, just like that. Pretty slick, huh? So when you put the power to the starter, as I just described, the starter spins. Yeah, this splined shaft spins. And when it spins, it spins that gear. Right, this big gear right here. So the Bendix is just sitting there, and that's all it does. It sits and waits for the starter to say, okay, spin. So the starter spins this gear. When the starter spins that gear, what happens is, watch, this mechanism goes out. I'm not making it go out. It's going out, see? It's got a special spring-loaded mechanism and it makes it move out. So that this gear, which previously was sitting here, is now sitting over here, where the flywheel gear is. Yes, exactly. So you spin the starter, this thing spins, this goes out, engages the flywheel, and spins the flywheel, and the engine starts. Now, once the engine starts, you don't want this sitting out there spinning all the time. So the engine starts to spin, and it goes back. Okay, Bendix. I don't know what other name. I think Bendix might be a brand name, but everybody calls it Bendix. So you got that? Starter motor engages this gear. When the starter motor spins, it goes like this. This gear jumps out engages with the flywheel, spins the flywheel, and the engine starts. As soon as the engine starts, this goes back in. Just that easy, because you let go of the key, right? That's why you don't hold the key. If you hold the key on the starter, and then the engine starts, you keep holding the key, this thing is out there on the flywheel. Now the flywheel is trying to go fast because the gas engine has started now. It's trying to spin really fast. This is not going that fast. You got to be careful because you can ruin this gear. You can strip it pretty badly. So as soon as the engine starts, you let go. As soon as you let go, that goes back in. The flywheel is out here spinning away and your engine has started. Just that easy. So anyway, I got to put that in and I got to pop that in. I'm going to take the old solenoid off. Two bolts, probably 10 millimeter, right? <laughs> two wires. Disconnect the battery first because when you take that battery cable off of here, it's hot. If it falls and lands on the body anywhere, you're going to have a heck of a spark and a ruined battery. Disconnect the battery. Take that off, take that off. Take two bolts, take this off, probably 10 mil. Put the new one on, ta-da-ba-da-ba-do like that. Your engine will start. Hey, I hope there was something in there of interest to you. And I think, I hope I explained it correctly and uh, reasonably accurately and uh, also well enough that, that uh, people who are not mechanically inclined can understand it. You mechanics, if it was too simple and you're shaking your head, what a goofball this guy, he doesn't know anything, please forgive me. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really making these videos for mechanics. But maybe there's something in there for you. Hope you enjoyed that. And get your ATV running. It's hot. It's springtime, actually it's late spring here now, and the woods are full of animals and trees and mud and mosquitoes and neat stuff. Get your ATV running. Okay, guys, hope that helped. Talk to you soon. Allie Pierce at the ranch. I move my hand all the way and see what happens. Did you get that on? Uh, yep. Oh, good.